Yeah, my name is Jamie. I work for the Marine Parks Program in South Australia in the Ecological Science team. Um, I'm also lucky. Margot from Reef Life Survey is also in the audience today. Um, I'm going to be talking about how we use Reef Life Survey, an international citizen science program, to help um, implement our Marine Park Monitoring Program. Um, to start with, I just want to highlight that we're very lucky to live in South Australia. It's some of the most biologically diverse waters in the world. Um, I'm very excited as a diver to work here and naturally when the South Australian marine parks were implemented in 2012 it became one of the state's biggest conservation outcomes to protect these unique assets. So just quickly to give you an overview of the South Australian marine park network, we have 19 marine parks covering 44% um, of the state waters. There's multiple use zoning plan within these marine parks meaning that we have different zones for different activities. Um, from an ecological monitoring perspective, we're very interested in sanctuary zones. These are the no-take um, high conservation uh, value areas which cover 5% of the state waters. Um, in a nutshell though, our object of the marine parks in South Australia is really just this statement, to protect and conserve marine biodiversity and habitat. So our marine park program is quite a broad and diverse program. I just want to highlight that I'm only in one tiny little sub program um, but there's many different areas so we have a compliance unit, protection, so permitting, um, stewardship, your outreach and community engagement, performance which is where all our monitoring evaluation and reporting is and I'm in a sub team of the performance team, the ecological science team. So we're collecting ecological data from the marine parks and really to simplify what we're doing the main question we're trying to ask is are the parks working, are the marine parks effective? Um, so these are some of the questions that we're guided by in our program logic. So how do we do this? We have a huge statewide ecological monitoring program and only four of us to deliver it. Um, we actually prioritise the sanctuary zones that we work in. So there's 83 sanctuary zones across the entire state. So we have to prioritise where we work. Some sites we visit every year, some sites we visit every four years. We collect data from different ecosystems, so reefs, seagrass, sand, um, and the primary methods that we use are baited remote underwater video systems. Some of you might have heard of the term BROVS before. It's basically dropping a camera in with bait on it. Um, really good for collecting data about fish assemblages, biodiversity, size. We also use habitat mapping, so inventory and swath. Um, there's a nice swath map there so we can see where the sea mounts, what the bathymetry is doing, topography, seafloor. And what I'm going to focus on is the underwater visual census, so the diver surveys. So underwater visual census or diver surveys is a really effective tool for collecting data from subtitle reefs. Um, nothing really compares to having divers in the water and collecting this data and it's also a non-intrusive method. So everything we're looking at down there, we're measuring in situ, we're not damaging the habitat so this is really good for working in sanctuary zones. Um, we're collecting data across a very broad range of taxonomies, so from little cryptic fish right up to pelagics, um, macroinvertebrates, algae are all assessed on the same transect. I'm not going to go into the details of the methods we use, but just to note that um, we've always used the methods that were developed by the University of Tasmania. They were uh, previously known as the MPA or Marine Protected Area Method and now we've modified to the Reef Life Survey Method and I'm going to talk a little bit more about Reef Life Survey shortly. Um, another reason we keep collecting dive data is because we already have an existing long-term database. So we've collected data for over 10 years and when you're working in marine protected areas, having that long-term data database is absolutely critical for detecting shifting baselines and what's happening. And this map here is just a bit of a show-off site to say all the places we get to dive in South Australia. So it sounds really great, but there's lots of limitations, as you can imagine, with diving. Um, it's very resource intensive. As soon as you get divers out on boats and in the water, it costs all, all the money. And a lot of ecological programs are quite constrained with their budgets. Um, time constraints. There's only so many dives and so much data we can collect in a day before we get bent. So um, we're quite limited by what we can do in our program. And also it requires a high level of skill and training. So currently with all of that in mind, we really only have capacity to survey about 20 of the sanctuary zones that we've prioritised, which is about 25%. So this is where citizen science com comes into play. Um, we already had an existing long-term partnership with Reef Life Survey, so we thought, what about if we amp that up a little bit and extend our Reef Life Survey training to the community and have a local branch, um, a local level citizen science project, which is feeding into this international one. So we had the goal to go out and train recreational divers that could actually assist us with our core marine park monitoring and also build a pool of engaged volunteers so they become the custodians of our marine parks and environments. 
But that's what we did. Um, these are some snaps from last year. This is our first year. We took out a boat, we took out some divers, and we did an RLS training expedition over five days. And we conquered quite a lot. We got 28 surveys done across seven marine park sites, lots of species recorded, and we're all set to go again in 2008. Budget's always a bit of an issue, but yes, we're set to go again in April. Um, and this is just the beginnings for us. We're trying to really set up this program at a local level to try and keep the citizens engaged and help us with our marine parks monitoring. So, what is Reef Life Survey? I've said it about 100 times already. Um, it's established in 2008. It's an international citizen science program founded in Australia. Really, Reef Life Survey is a collaboration of scientists, management and recreational divers, all coming together, trained in scientific survey methods. So to date, they've done over 10,300 surveys worldwide in over 50 countries at over 2,500 sites and over 5,000 species have been recorded. So it's a huge effort. This is just to visualise a little bit more the RLS story. So we have our divers, they go out, they collect the data, they're trained, they enter data all night. <laughs> Um, over 230 divers in the RLS program, and this is where all the data has been collected from so far on every continent. The data then goes into a central online database where it's managed, and the data can then be extracted for scientific publications or management publications. But it's also open access, so public can go onto the website and actually extract the data themselves. So I see this as a really great tool in citizen science that I can send the divers that I'm working with to the website and you know, they can share it with their local dive clubs community and say, hey, I'm really curious what's happening in the Gulf of St. Vincent. They can look it up on the website and take the data themselves. From a scientific perspective, RLS data is of a really high quality. Um, there's a lot of attention to training volunteers. So the data that comes out of the surveys can actually be used to assess population trends, biomass at species level. We can link ecological components of reef systems, can calculate de desirable ecological indicators, um, and also be used for studies about food webs, trophic, functionality of ecosystems. It's really endless, but the main key point is that everybody's collecting data the same way around the world, so it's universally standardised, which is amazing for comparing your MPAs around the world. The scientific impact of RLS has been quite high. There's been, oops, sorry, there's been well over 45 publications and management reports published in the last 10 years, with 25 alone just relying on RLS data. Um, the paper Edgar et al. 2014, published in Nature, is actually the most cited paper on marine conservation in the last five years, um, with over 440 citations. From a management perspective, as I've said before, this data is really important for marine protected area um, science, establishing baselines and new baselines and how they shift, and also understanding the trends through time and different pressures. So without this data, we wouldn't really understand what's happening in our marine parks. As with most citizen science, the public outcomes are really important and Reef Life Survey has developed some really high quality um, brochures and public materials. Um, the website, I'm going to give a little bit of a plug as well, it has a really um, easy to use global reef field guide and data access is mentioned before for local citizens. So um, if you haven't been there before, I highly recommend checking out this website. It's really like got an amazing search tool, so there's over 4,400 species that have been profiled. Um, very similar to the, the talk before, you can bring up the species side by side and compare. If you think you've got a black and white fish, you can just search based on colour and it'll bring up all the black and white fish. It also has ecological and geographical information. Um, you can also do a circle around what area you're looking at, what sites, and it'll bring up all the species. It also has flashcards for RLS divers, so people can actually learn their species. Um, it's a really great resource. Um, I can't really it summarise key outcomes for the Marine Park Program on one page, but basically it's maximised the outputs um, from our very limited resources of our program. We've increased the spatial and temporal um, coverage of our data by having more surveys. And also the main thing for us is by collecting this high quality data, it's feeding into an international citizen science program where it's getting published at a global scale. So it's really raising the profile of South Australia. If we were trying to do this ourselves, we wouldn't have the same outputs. And then same with every other citizen science, the stewardship and education outcomes are phenomenal. Um, and also just having local volunteers that are diving in marine parks, it's bringing that connection so they're connected to their local marine environment. So collaboration partnership is absolutely paramount for our program. I'm so sorry for the next speaker, I might slightly go over time, but if anyone has questions, just come up and talk to me at lunchtime.
Reef Life Survey is a global collaboration between marine scientists, management agencies and recreational divers. A key motivation of RLS is to make the underwater world visible to the public and especially to management agencies. It's about providing the information needed to better manage the marine environment and also for scientists to tackle questions that haven't been able to be answered before. So it's about finding the right divers, providing lots of training and extending the scientific team. There's a real focus on the detail and quality of the data. We have a growing number of locations around Australia and the world where we're gathering teams of RLS divers for annual monitoring. Rottnest Island's a really good example of this. We started monitoring it in 2008 uh, with the support of the Rottnest Island Authority and uh, been monitoring every year since. A key part of RLS is working with management agencies. They help direct where the data are needed most for their purposes and then we provide the data to them to help understand the implications of their management actions better. My name is Dr Tom Holmes and I coordinate the Marine Monitoring Program uh, through the Marine Science Program. The ecological programs, generally speaking, have fairly tight budgetary constraints in what they tend to operate in. So ways to get the biggest bang for your buck in terms of what you're doing really come into play. I see RLS as a, an incredibly important tool, particularly through strategies such as adaptive management. You know, Long-term data sets play a very important role in informing our management decisions that we make. Western Australian coast is incredibly vast coastline. It covers a massive area. Some of the techniques that are used are, are used on the national and international scale. And so the scale at which they operate over here in Western Australia really fits in beautifully and provides information that's very complementary. The inclusion of scientists and researchers within Reef Life Survey really places the emphasis on uh, quality control. And having those people involved in there really adds that filter process to the data that comes out the other side and leaves us with a whole lot more confidence uh, of the information that's actually telling us. This is like my home turf. Um, I dive quite a lot here. My name's Paul Day. I've been volunteering with the Reef Life Survey Foundation for 10 years now. Uh, RLS is a huge part of my life now. It's probably not a week that goes by where I'm not involved in something to do with RLS. Or what I got out of it most at the beginning was, was that connection with the environment and actually beginning to understand what was happening around me. We had a marine heat wave back in 2010 and 2011 and we saw a big ecological change here. A lot of fishies were lost. But it was really interesting to be here at that period of time and see that change. Not just in terms of I could physically see it when I was diving, but the data that was coming out of the program would actually show it in a quantitative way. I cannot imagine I'd still be in the program 10 years on unless I knew that my data was going to be contributing to um, a significant meaningful outcome in terms of you know, managing and conserving the environment. RLS has kind of facilitated a, a network of citizen scientists that are becoming professional scientists. 